morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Wednesday, August 12, 2009. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S., 4.30 p.m. in London and Mexico City. It's 9.30 a.m. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. We have a couple of breaking stories that came in after we put the issue to rest. Uh, the first concerns the uh, effort by the U.S. government to get the Union Bank of Switzerland to turn over the names and uh, amounts of 52,000 private accounts belonging to American citizens. Uh, news comes just a few minutes ago that U.S. and Swiss negotiators have now uh, initialed the settlement that averts a legal showdown over the American government's challenge to the Swiss bank secrecy laws. Uh, in a conference call this morning with the federal judge presiding over the case, uh, the Justice Department announced that the uh, two parties had initialed agreements and would ask the judge to dismiss the matter uh, once the final documents are signed. There's no information as to what the terms of the deal, in fact, were. However, um, it's relatively certain now that, uh, in short order, entering the public arena will be information indicating as to who has those 52,000 accounts. And it's expected that those names will be of significant interest to anybody who follows financial matters in the United States. Here's some other news. This is coming from uh, the Insurance Times. And uh, apparently, last Thursday, on August 6th, uh, there was a, uh, a robbery, a, a rather daring heist in London on New Bond Street uh, was a London jewelry uh, store uh, called Graff, G-R-A-F-F, -F, and the, uh, the perpetrators uh, got away with 40 million pounds worth of jewels. That's about 70 million U.S. dollars. Apparently Willis is the broker uh, for Graff, and uh, XL is the lead insurer of the deal. Uh, this is supposedly uh, the second biggest robbery in Britain it's succeeded only by a uh, robbery in 2006. Uh, female staff members were dragged outside by two well-dressed men who fired a shot. No one was injured. They escaped in a blue BMW. It was a well-planned robbery. Just before we went on the air, uh, some news came from the BBC that one of the perpetrators has, in fact, been arrested. Uh, both Willis and XL declined to comment, uh, but the take was uh, 40 million pounds, British. 70 million U.S. So, now to our regular news. It's uh, more about Typhoon Marakot. Rescuers in Taiwan have now found nearly a thousand people alive in a very remote area of the island. These are people that they had feared dead or missing. The official death toll in Taiwan now stands at 63. Uh, it's expected to go up, of course. In uh, Taiwan and the Philippines and China, the total is 93 dead. It dumped as much as 80 inches of rain on Taiwan before moving on to China, uh, where it destroyed 10,000 homes. Uh, Morakot claimed 22 lives in the Philippines. It slammed into China with the winds exceeding 75 miles per hour. A million and a half people were forced to evacuate. Um, we have some statistics later on as to uh, how much damage specifically was done, but the Chinese government on the mainland is saying that direct economic losses have been estimated at 1.4 billion U.S. In uh, one town, for example, in Wangzhou, um, a uh, two, seven, seven, three-story apartment buildings at the foot of a mountain uh, were completely washed out by runoff flooding water coming off the mountains. Uh, the Chinese are saying that uh, there are only six people buried in the landslide. Local sources are saying much more. And out in the Philippines, uh, more damage relating to the storm. This is uh, to do with fiber optics. Chunghua Telecom Company is saying this morning that three of its undersea cables across the Luzon Strait, providing international uh, voice calls and Internet connectivity, have been damaged by undersea landslides caused by the typhoon. Uh, Changhua has repaired one of the cables, but uh, damage to two others have limited voice calls and internet service between Taiwan and Singapore and the Philippines and Hong Kong. Uh, by late today, Philippine time, companies whose voice connections have been affected by the cable damage 
uh, had 50% of their service restored, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. In Japan, uh, here's a weather map of uh, Tropical Storm Eitau. As you can see, it's uh, moving to the uh, east now, well away from Japan. It brought torrential rains and flooding and landslides to Japan, especially to the western part of the company, the country. Uh, Risk Management Solutions is reporting that uh, uh, maximum sustained winds of about 40 miles per hour ended up putting it at a uh, tropical storm strength on the safer Simpson scale. 14 deaths in Japan were reported as a result of the storm. 12 of the deaths came from Hyogo Prefecture, uh, most of them in the town of Seyo. Japanese TV showed uh, footage of Seyo police and rescue personnel uh, removing bodies and other uh, uh, victims from the town. Um, Here's some more information on uh, some of the damage relating to uh, Typhoon uh, Morakot. Apparently uh, in Taiwan, about $130 million U.S. worth of damage was done. There was a tremendous amount of damage done to Taiwan fish farms, approximately $90 million U.S., and some uh, 14,500 acres of uh, uh, fish farms were said to have been affected. Just if you're interested in these figures, 81,000 hogs were killed, 2.7 million chickens, and some 709,000 ducks were killed in Taiwan as a result of the typhoon. And lest we forget, yesterday in Japan there was an earthquake, and here's a shot of a highway uh, just to the west of Tokyo. Um, still, uh, remarkably, only one death has been reported. There have been no reports of any damage or injuries, but as you can see, it was uh, not an inconsequential jolt. And uh, here in the U.S., in North America at least, this is going to be probably a familiar picture coming up. I'll take a look at this. This is a uh, tropical depression uh, coming out of the area of the Cape Verde Islands and moving to the west. It strengthened slightly. We've been looking at this now for the past few days. Uh, the uh, National Hurricane Center reported that as of 5 a.m., uh, the tropical depression, which they're calling tropical depression number two, it doesn't have a name yet, has winds of 35 miles per hour. It's intensified a little bit. It's moving to the west at 12 miles per hour. It could become a tropical storm uh, probably by Friday. The storm is about 535 miles west of the Cape Verdes. The uh, hurricane uh, center says that it uh, forecasts a track that will uh, have it miss the Caribbean, but on a direct path, we can bring that up again, uh, to the United States. It'll pass uh, northeast of Puerto Rico by early Monday. And uh, as you can see, if it does intensify and does not turn to the north, um, it could be heading right in uh, toward uh, Florida, northern Florida, or the Carolinas. Uh, India is dealing with the swine flu. They, uh, officials in India, have uh, ordered uh, all schools and colleges in Mumbai, the financial capital of the country, to shut down for a whole week. This is over fears about the spread of the H1N1 virus. The state government of Maharashtra, uh, in which uh, Mumbai is located, says that they have seen the highest incidence in India of fatalities in their state from the virus. They put the order out today. Four people died in Maharashtra after contracting the swine flu virus. So as a result now, uh, all cinemas, theaters, and schools will be closed down uh, for the week. Um, unless I miss my guess, Mumbai is also the headquarters of the, uh, the Bollywood industry as well, so that's going to be a little bit of a taxing situation for everybody. School children will be happy, I'm sure. Stock market's up about 122 points. We'll go to a word from our sponsors. Every day, the world wakes up and goes to work, pursuing the unique opportunities that lead the global economy forward. The complexity and close connectivity of today's global marketplace is a true modern miracle that can create unparalleled success. But it takes confidence, passion, innovation, and understanding. Enabling opportunity. Protecting capital. Engineering innovation. Investing in your future. Ensuring continuity. Finding the right balance. It takes Aeon.